Hey. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome hello. back. Welcome back to Free Flow, guys. Me and Julia are saying hello, giving a wave. Um, yeah, welcome back to episode four, um, Inner Autumn. Today we'll yeah. be doing a deep dive into the old luteal phase, everybody's favourite time, everybody's <laughs> favourite season. <laughs> Um, as always, if you're seeing this on video or if you're seeing video snippets and you see me glancing, it's because I've got the notes here because ADHD brain, we're attempting to rein it in a little bit and not go off on a massive tangent. Julia is excellent at helping me do that as well. <laughs> um, oh my goodness me. So I think we'll, um, we'll start with a cycle day check-in. Um, yep. I was just frantically trying to remember what cycle day I was on today. So that's quite funny. But um, <laughs> Julia, what, where are you at in your cycle? What cycle day are you on today? Day number two. Oh, <laughs> all hail day two. Oh, day yeah. two. I love the day yeah. two. It's my I do, I always, now every time I'm on day two, I think, oh, it's Sorsha's favourite day. Yes, it is. It's um, an absolute fave. Anyway. Yeah. I'm not sure it's my favorite day. No. <laughs> but um yeah. So have you got uh, any words to describe how you're feeling today, then Julia? <laughs> it's like I could write a whole book. <laughs> <laughs> oh my dear. Oh, how do I start? <laughs> um no. Well, I actually feel like things have settled down a bit now, but I had a really so I had a really so two days ago so the day before my period started like it was I've just felt terrible like I felt mm. so sick and I knew what it was you know <laughs> I was like and like we've spoken about this before you're just like just the period just has to start just please mm. start you know so it, it felt like that like there was a that's lot like a late in an autumn kind of vibe yeah it's good yeah for today's topic yeah exactly perfect for today's topic yeah and then, yeah, it's just, I've had really uh, painful periods recently. So yesterday I was in a lot of pain and today it's, it's subsided. I feel like things are calming down. Usually mm. by day three, things are like, oh, everything's fine now. Mm. <laughs> so, so yeah, so I'm kind of in a bit of pain, but not too bad. And um, I'm just feeling very, like, I find decisions really hard to make um in this phase like late mm. autumn, early winter and I just find things get very overwhelming like yes there's a lot of stuff happening I'm just like I can't I have to do like one thing at a time so mm. um yeah so I'm finding it quite hard to navigate decisions <laughs> yes <laughs> yes so, I, yeah. I feel this I also get like this especially <laughs> I can be like this a bit anyway, but especially like, yeah, in a, in an autumn, uh, it's, but yeah, late in an autumn, early in a winter. Mm -hmm. Um, so guys, if you haven't listened to our other podcasts, um, in a winter would be day one of the first kind of flow, um, of, yeah, of menstruation. So, um, yeah, often it's, uh, yeah, I find it is, yeah, difficulty with decision. I think because earlier autumn, I feel like inner critic is there, or there's that kind of that, edit get the stuff done bam 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 and then I think in a, a like a little bit later I feel like the late autumn is like I'm kind of just ready to like drop into the void and just you know <laughs> I'll say I've said it before and I'll say it again I'm just ready to like lie naked on a seashell with a bit of silk over me a nice flying golden cherub just feeding me grapes that's that's the vibe <laughs> I want you know um that's how I feel I don't want to make decisions about stuff even dinner I'm like paralyzed and, and you know that's and it paralyzed. it's like even the smallest thing like you know someone's like asking oh when should we go and have dinner and they've given me two date choices and I've spent the last three days like I don't know which and also sometimes and it it's just matter. saying like can you uh, sometimes I'll just say to people like can you just pick what like a bit like when I'm like giving you a voice note like a couple of weeks ago and I was like blah, 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 like for like three minutes I was like voice noting Julia and Julia was like oh so you just want xyz and I was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I think I'm learning as well to just ask for the thing. Yes. Like I'll be like, this is really rambly, but I am incoherent and I just need you to tell me the thing, or you know, I need you to just yeah. give me the thing as a more yeah. concise yeah. thing. <laughs> just yeah, mm. just present me with a thing and I can oh. say yes to the thing. Yeah. Like rather than should we do this or this on this date or this date with this person, that but and I'm just like, 
that's too many things mm, <laughs> yeah definitely definitely oh um, so so yeah I'm definitely but and also I think what's been really good because this is sort of my about my third cycle that I'm aware of the seasons and yes, I'm using that yes. point so I'm becoming really much more aware of things and it's really nice to be able to just have the language to talk about it yeah and put names to things mm, and also 100%. be like I'm not just going crazy this is you know I know what's happening in my body and I know what the hormone changes are mm. and I know that I'm not going nuts and I know I will get back to you know like power you know ovulation stage and all that yeah but um, one thing that I feel like I'm becoming much more aware of and I did a bit more of this time was um I knew I needed to rest mm. as we said, winter rest is radical yeah um, so yeah so like on my last day of autumn and first day of winter I was like there were things happening that I could go and do and I was like actually no I'm just gonna chill on the sofa mm. yeah so, choose not to it's really yeah really mm. nice yeah. So anyway, how about you, Sorsh? Where are you? Oh, I am. I mean, first of all, there's a little bit of drilling next door because the next door's getting an <laughs> extension, which has been driving me insane for like six weeks. I'm like, when are you going to be finished? Um, I'm on holiday as well. I think I've just left the building when I've gone on holiday. I'm just like, I'm going to oh, keep you right no. now. Um, so there is a little bit of that in the background. I actually went away for like a few hours today, luckily, whilst I was, I was being recorded, like interviewed for another podcast um but it's very it's not very loud but I'm just telling people now I don't know how to edit that out and I'm just not going to so <laughs> I can't it's not really too loud. hear it I don't I think it's really yeah it. I don't think it's too bad so um um yeah but I'm on cycle day 18 um so I am kind of um normally to be honest I'm pretty like ensconced in in the inner autumn um around this time I feel um I feel surprisingly good um, I try not to like, you know, think of it as being like, oh God, difficult times. But normally 17, 18 or 19 is when I, and obviously check with, you know, whoever prescribes your, if you're on medication for ADHD or other things, I don't know how it affects it, but this is my experience. But um, normally I'd be taking a higher dose around this time because I don't find the meds as effective in luteal phase. Um, and I actually feel really good. I'm sure part of that is because, um, I'm feeling quite excited with the podcast stuff. I'm actually feeling very invigorated Ooh. by the momentum that is happening at the moment in my business. Um, and I do work a day job and it is a bit soul sucking. I'm going to be honest, guys. It's not the thing I want to do. Um, and I don't hate it, but it's just, you know, nine till six is a long time to be like oh god I just wish I could have been doing all this other stuff now but you know um but I am grateful you know I'm obviously grateful to like, have work and to mostly be working from home and all the things but I think the biggest thing I've learned this year and I, I think a bit last year as well is that you can be grateful for something and still want so much more and that's okay it's like kind of that whole I feel like practicing cycle awareness allows us to have show up in all the shades of ourselves rather I think before I'd be like oh so you should just feel glad you've got a job you should just be grateful you've got money and I, I am I am grateful for those things but I also want to be self-employed <laughs> so badly you know um yeah. more for my energy level than brain so I'm actually yeah I'm feeling really good today I've got um I'm working on Saturday so it's Wednesday and I actually have to stay off work we're, we're kind of pre-recording this really um for ourselves so yeah I'm on cycle day 18 feeling surprisingly good um I wonder if the brain fog will hit you know tomorrow morning sometimes it kind of hits so again just kind of yeah learning to like slow my roll a little bit um today there's like so many things and I'm like oh I want to do this and, th and I just have to remind myself mm -hmm. sure there's tomorrow and I found that so tricky and I think that really pops up in luteal phase because it's like gotta get the thing done gotta get it done gotta get it out go 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 you know I have that like madness of ah like a mad scientist like I need to show everyone my invention ah you know I feel like that kind of vibe um and I think a lot of that comes and we I won't you know harp on about this bit but I wonder if anyone um listening can resonate but I wonder if that's because I experienced a lot of death at a very young age and a lot of people dying way before they should have been dying you know very young as well and I think that for a really long time especially before I knew I had ADHD there was a big part of me that's like but you might not have tomorrow and that's still there 
but it also if I'm not careful will make me like really burn out because like today I have the day off you know and I'm like but I might not have to and it's like well you don't have tomorrow <laughs> uploading an episode of this podcast probably isn't really going to be the biggest you know I kind of have to be like it's probably not going to be the biggest you know <laughs> buster of all times if you don't do this thing you know and it's quite uh it's good for perspective but for a long time I was like might not have tomorrow whereas now I'm like well if I don't have tomorrow then I'm probably not going to be lying there like I wish I had uploaded another podcast you know I wish I had edited this picture better in Canva or whatever the thing is um you know so I kind of have to like laugh at it now but it's it's taken me a really long time and I was thinking I've been thinking about this a bit over the last few kind of inner autumns actually and um yeah and I was like oh maybe that's because yeah I kind of you know these the deaths I had especially the younger people were very sudden it was like here today literally gone tomorrow so I think, um, and I wonder maybe people with like, you know, more trauma enforced learning slash backgrounds and everything, you know, have opinions on that. And I'm, I'm really intrigued, but I think that, yeah, that along with the whole, there's never enough time, which is such an ADHD. Uh, mm-hmm. I think anyone has that anyway, but if ADHD, it's really like, it can really paralyze you um, to not do anything, you know? That's the, um, the irony, isn't it? Like, there's not enough time and all you just spend your time paralyzed yeah. there's not enough time and they use up all your time yeah exactly exactly yeah. so I'm really trying to just be like Saoirse just take the imperfect messy action a little bit at a time and yeah and just yeah. kind of you know having these discussions you know if someone's got a thread on a Facebook about podcasts you know put like oh this is what I'm doing and you know I've had a couple of people uh I've had yeah I've got another podcast interview lined up and I've had two in the last like month so mm. I feel like it's awesome source universe whatever it is it's just kind of like start taking the back. messy imperfect action and watch how it's kind of aligning and watch the momentum and it is very easeful it's not like I'm like oh god you know frantically <laughs> searching for things Uh, which again perhaps helps you know having a job and having the income I'm sure helps as well because I'm not like oh god I've got to make this feel you know you know make ends meet for some people I think that really works I I feel like for me it would be very very stressful um (laughs) my savings could be a bit better than they are (laughs) I mean they're there but it's always nice to have a little bit more so I think it kind kind of depends you know and then I know some people who have you know just taken the leap but um I think you've got to feel into what works for you but yeah so um so basically yes day 18 I'm in my inner autumn um feeling yeah very good and maybe it's like a maybe I'm in like a crossover day today I feel that that might be more of the the way I'm feeling um so yeah so I, I and I had a really painful summer which was interesting because we had we just filmed mm. out in a summer episode and um we can maybe dive into this a bit on our live on tomorrow night um, but I had really painful ovulation cramps, Mittelschmerz or whatever the hell oh. I can never say them. One day I'll actually listen to how you say it before I start speaking. <laughs> it's a German word for the ovulation cramps. And uh, yeah. yeah, so I feel like less campy. Oh. So maybe it was just a really painful inner summer. So in autumn is mm-hmm. better? I don't know. Um, <laughs> mm, probably not. I say that now and tomorrow I'll be like. So I think today I'm like, yeah, just kind of enjoying the momentum setting some stuff up because I know my energy is very likely to kind of wane like the moon um you know any kind of day now really so and that's also that's okay I'm just like that's fine slow Mm. your roll Mm. it's not about doing all the mad stuff now it's just you know have a little bit of fun get some bits in place um yeah, yeah and that kind of yeah winding down really so (laughs) yeah. <laughs> mm. it's also a really great time to edit you know in our inner autumn we have this beautiful time of um where the inner critic can kind of pop out um and the inner critic I think deserves to be honest a whole podcast of its own um but uh <laughs> inner critic is kind of that voice that can shut it shut you down quite quickly and and inner autumn is really where we can let the inner critic not run rampant because it shouldn't be running rampant throughout our whole cycle and for example if you think of like if you think of an idea at menstruation, you get like a download or, or an idea. And then in inner spring is like, okay, I'm going to start to put that in place. And inner critics like, who are you to be do- Who are you to be starting a podcast? Who are you to be writing this guide? What do you know? Who's going to want to listen? Yeah, yeah. um, kind of like the self-saboteur, you know? 
Um, yeah. And I feel yeah. like when, and, you, and that, that's the time when you can be like, hush your gums in a critic. You can come out again in autumn and you have to be like really firm. <laughs> like, you, come, you come out in autumn, you're going to help me edit all this stuff with a nice critical eye. And that's going to be really helpful. That's going to use your strengths. Great. But until then, you know, get out of here, basically. <laughs> get out of here. Um, so it's, yeah, and, and, and even then, you know, it's like letting the inner critic out in, in, in autumn, but not letting it run rampant. You know, I think that's where mm. self-sabotage can be really, for me, when I first started my own business with the yoga, oh God, it was painful because everything mm. I was doing was like, rah, 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 you know, and I just thought, oh my gosh. But now it's, it's easy. I can catch it a bit more now, but it takes a while. So, yeah, so it is a great time to edit. We kind of do have that, you know, um, mm. the urge to be like, like cutting. It's like, that's great. Just use that. If you're writing a book, use that time to, you know, edit it, you know, um, or making mm. something pretty or whatever it is you're doing, you know, use that time to yeah. edit. Mm. Mm. So what's the, the luteal phase? Can you just remind me? Oh, that inner autumn phase, or yeah, so luteal phase is inner autumn, and it is. I used to say it's the week before your bleed, but really, it's more like I think kind of 12 to 14 days before the bleed, so depending on like the length of your cycle. Um, and so, and again, we'll we'll have a separate episode on this, but people who struggle, like myself, with PMDD, that really. Kind of flares up if you like in in autumn and that is a really big chunk of your so you know it's almost like you know half of the cycle really mm. it's a big it's a big chunk of time probably the longest part of any of the phases because ovulation is kind of a few days um in a spring just before ovulation um isn't you know mega long and and bleeding can kind of vary a little bit for me it's kind of five days um so that can kind of you know play with the the amount of time for, for things but yeah in a, a the luteal phase in autumn is um yeah is is a longer stretch and basically your um progesterone i can never say that word but i think I've, i think i've said it right now mm. progesterone is is rising and so and the, the estrogen is dipping so as the progesterone rises it um it releases it enables um i always want to say abba like the band but gabba not ABBA don't confuse them um it, I believe it releases like ABBA it releases GABA <laughs> give me give me give me um, it releases them release the sounds um it, it it releases um yeah the GABA which is basically it kind of makes you more chill it helps you to kind of relax you know kick back a little bit but it can kind of um cover your ears kids but it can kind of cock block um, what I call like the three musketeers so like serotonin dopamine and one day I will remember how to say this word neonephrine um, but it kind of it kind of blocks them so as the estrogen so, so that's why someone knocking on my door motion detected at the front door <laughs> <laughs> I think someone's at my door one second really okay <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Lady was like, sorry, did I wake you up? I was like, do I look like I'm wearing pajamas as a kimono? You <laughs> <laughs> know, just part this in a little bit. Um, right. Anyway, um, I might be able to edit that bit out, but if I can't, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. I probably will be able to edit that out. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. So um, yeah, so basically it it's kind of it it, it helps us to kind of feel like 
we kind of want to nest and we want to like, I guess I, I, I imagine it's a bit like when someone's pregnant and they kind of get into the nesting phase where they like just want to make it all nice for baby. I feel like that's, and I'm sure one of my <laughs> friends or a couple of my friends that kind of do this work. I don't have many friends that have had kids and also do this kind of work. So I'm sure one mm. of them said it feels a little bit like that. Um, perhaps yeah. maybe when it's like second or third trimester, maybe. Oh, the cuckoo clock's about to go off. <laughs> All the noises today. Um, but that makes sense, right? Because that would be when the fertilized egg would attach itself to the lining. Yeah. Right? So you'd, so you'd want to get ready, like, oh, a baby's coming. You better yeah, start I think it's a bit like it. plumping the cushions. It's a bit like plumping the, the <laughs> lining, you know? <laughs> that's how my brain goes I'm like oh it's just like a big giant cushy sofa in there um yeah and then, so, and then hmm. yeah you get to winter and your body's like oh there's no baby and then it's go, like throwing go. all the cushions off the couch like, oh, how dare you not have a baby brilliant <laughs> have we some rain instead yeah. <laughs> all the cushions yeah exactly yeah but yes. we get so we do get this nice kind of vibe of like nesting and yeah. I quite like, or like just kind of tidying. I mean, it's not often I get an urge to tidy, guys. I'm gonna be honest, but it's nice <laughs> to just kind of I'm like, oh yeah, I feel like hoovering or you know just kind of getting uh, getting the place a bit, a bit like more of a deeper, not a tidy, but more of like a deeper clean kind of thing. It's a bit like mm -hmm. um, hunkering down for winter. I feel like it's like before hibernation. So that's kind of imagine you're a bear, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> oh, boys and girls, folks. Um, yeah, imagine you're a bear and uh, you're getting ready to like, you know, not talk to anyone. <laughs> Just want to eat and sleep, basically. So it's how best to prepare. And there's a few rituals actually I have, Julian. I oh, I don't know if you have any, but I'd love to hear them if you do. But um, as a couple of rituals that I do, and one of them actually will be doing tomorrow, which is I have this really nice red bedding, and mm. I will change the, my existing bedding into the red bedding um as kind okay. of a, a an outer external signal to slow my roll um so I'll do that and that will be on you know till you know the end of my bleed um and I always forever lose my phone in it and every single time I'm like where's my goddamn phone why have I done this like every single time <laughs> I'm like oh why did I buy red bedding with a red phone <laughs> that, it works really well um so yeah I love to do that and um it's just something I really enjoy doing and it helps me to kind of slow down. Um, I also mm. notice there's like certain clothes I really enjoy wearing because of the um, like sensation of them on my skin um, mm. and things like that. So yeah, I kind of get those things sort of ready. Um, I have a whole drawer of like period products that I use, like it has everything in there, like oils and everything that. So I'll kind of start to use some of those like um some clary calm oil that I have that's like got clary sage in it and things and just helps to like mm. calm down I'll be actually bringing it tomorrow because I'll be in the office and I'm just like oh, I don't want to be in the office when I'm too hot <laughs> 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 annoying me just by breathing so it'll be good for things yeah. like that um and then yeah I just kind of make sure you know I've got like my my cacao is like replenished I've got enough of that so I really enjoy that um when I'm on my bleed yeah, I wanted to great ask you about Oh, sorry. I thought you were oh, done. No, no, no. What was that? I oh, just, I just was going to say, it's just a great source of magnesium and it helps with cramps. So it's nice to have some cacao in. Ah, oh, okay. So I was going to ask you about cacao because I was like, okay, I'm in my winter. Is this the good, is this the time for cacao? I couldn't remember. So is that a winter thing or is that an autumn thing? Well, I, I think, I mean, A, it's an anytime thing. Um, but okay. B, it's um, <laughs> whenever you want it. Um, I would say, so I actually went for a really nice walk before work yesterday and I have this little flask that has like enough drink for one in it. So I took that off and I had some cacao um, and I had, would say I was probably still ovulating because I had the, the cramps still. Um, and that was just really nice. And I was like, oh, I just really was like, that's what I really want to do. And after our, you know, our podcast on In the Summer on episode three, we were kind of talking about having some pause and even with my listening partner which I have the Red School um, certification I'm doing we were speaking about really pausing in inner summer and almost treating it like in a uh, in a winter because it's like opposites you know maybe we need a yeah. bit of pause in both so I was like yeah. yeah actually maybe that's what I'm needing um so I would say yeah so I would say that um for me 
Um, and the last couple of cycles, I've been enjoying a bit of cacao on, in ovulation. So um, yeah, in a in a winter is great for it because it's really nice to have it on a on either an empty stomach or a light stomach. A bit like if you're going to practice yoga, you don't want to be like stuffed full of I don't know carbonara, <laughs> ready to roll. <laughs> All good. So um, I really enjoy it. Yeah, when I'm when I'm in my um, in a winter and if uh, ideally if I'm not working because it's a bit you know I need to have food so I don't want to you know throttle people down the phone when I'm on the phone to them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, with my day job but I would say yeah um it's really nice to have like days I'd say days one day two cacao a day off of day two so that's like a magic potion for me I'll, I'll be like have a little sleep in make some cacao because it's also when you're on your bleed and this again this will be different for everyone but I practice a bit of light fasting because I just sometimes I'll feel, especially by like day two or three. And again, if I'm if I'm working those days, it's different. But if I have the days off, I notice oh, I actually don't have a massive appetite. It's nice to have like some broths or soups, things like that. Um, just mm. some nice warm foods, easy to digest for the for the stomach as well for the digestion. So it can kind of just rest and really have that deep rest, you know, kind of nourishment. Um, and I think cacao is like really great for that. Again, it's got my, a really good source of magnesium, so it helps with sort of um, bloating and cramping things like that um and then yeah so I would have a bit of cacao um, and then I would you know and I make a whole ritual of it you know um sometimes I'm just kind of sleepy and it's just there and I enjoy it but sometimes I'll be like thinking it singing into it doing a little <laughs> bit of journaling with my red pen um and yeah. maybe listening to some music having a bit of mental movement um yeah things like that so um you can even have you know a little cacao in your bath or whatever so uh, yeah so I would say that it's really nice in 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 a winter especially okay. because also it helps you to like it's kind of it's very I think I feel like it's very soothing and relaxing but it also it gives you a little bit of a pet but in a really um I buy mine and it's a I, I can't remember the name of the, the company but they're very very um ethical and I don't drink it all the time I know some people will have it like every morning or a couple of times a day it's not you know cacao isn't it's not a cup of coffee and it is I feel like mm -hmm. it's very sacred and you know it's not really something I want to be using all of the time it's kind of really feel like a ritual um so I say like enjoy it um and yeah and and have like a a good um a good grade a high grade of cacao um and it's really like yeah, really helpful for like spiritual downloads. You know, if you're not ha if you're not had a really heavy meal, so your body isn't you know digesting. If you have a bit of cacao, kind of just opens you up a little bit, and you know have a nice meditation and just see what comes through. See what's like is waiting yeah. to come through. So <laughs> a little bit, yeah, maybe a little bit off off topic there, but you can have it yeah, in, yeah. in autumn. I guess maybe especially if you uh, you know maybe late autumn if you're feeling cramps and things. I'm sure I've had it in my later autumn um so it, yeah enjoy it but, where it feels good really yeah but I, mm. I just thought you were saying about the downloads and the you know like ideas coming through and you talk about the void a lot so that's an autumn thing right I feel like the void is the void is hard it's <laughs> it's avoiding the uh like wanting to be penned in <laughs> I feel like the void is like a late autumn probably okay. very early winter because it kind of goes with like the set the, the chambers so we have like the chamber of separation I definitely would love to do like a whole uh episode on the chambers because it's just too much to go into now especially if people are very new to this I don't want to like overwhelm people but yeah I feel like it's the void is kind of sometimes it will be like hey and I'll be in it and then I'll kind of be out of it again so I might like dip into it so maybe anytime over like in a few days I'll probably like dip in and be like huh I'm in it now and then sometimes I'll stay there for a few hours sometimes it'll be like a minute and I'm on my walk and I'm like oh and then I'm kind of back in the world again um and and then but I think when you really rest in in a winter then you can really drop into it so uh, yeah I, I feel like it kind of whispers a little bit you like know I feel like still... the void is kind of whispering to me in in, in autumn um okay. and then you can really drop like a stillness in. thing Mm, yeah yeah I'll have to like journal on that a little bit more and um clarify yeah. it because it's really I'd love to hear trying to find words it. for it I'm like how it, but but it also it's I'm sure that Shana and Alexandra do do speak about it in um in wild power in their book 
there's some oh yeah it's, it's kind of I mentioned next so i was like this is what i feel you know so, yeah, um, yeah 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 okay. the changes let's, of separation again let's talk about autumn then let's talk about yes. some of the well uh, yeah like you say a lot of people have a lot of issues in autumn mm. should we yeah i think so i think um some of the biggest things would be like yeah having that time to kind of edit and having the inner critic maybe run a bit rampant um I think that can be quite a challenge in in autumn especially if you're you know when I think of my business in terms of all those years ago it was still so new even if the idea even if I've been teaching yoga for a while the idea of the business was still a baby it was still maybe in its inner spring you know it was still kind of in its spring phase kind of hatching a bit more um and it's yeah, I think it's really detrimental to be like the perfectionism can't come out then because it will just stop you from doing any action, you know, mm -hmm. and either you, you, you acknowledge that and you, I think it's for me, it's taken quite a while. I think it's through things like yoga and meditation, surrender 